Hey, John Strohmeyer with Strohmeyer Law. When it comes to the Corporate Transparency Act, who can help you get this work done? Sure, anybody can do this work themselves, but if you're looking for an extra hand, if you're looking for a professional advisor to help you, where can they come in and actually help you with your entity? We know that the Corporate Transparency Act is now here. We do have an obligation as entity owners. Each reporting company has an obligation to file these reports. Let's break it down into the stages and the tasks that really need to be done. So first things first, we want to think about, is this entity actually a reporting company? You're going to look at that entity, and we're going to go through this in a little more detail, but really figuring out, is it subject to the reporting? Once you've figured out that you are in, if you are a reporting company that has to report your beneficial owners, well, you're going to need to get the beneficial ownership information on the beneficial owners and potentially those company applicants. Finally, the last step is to take that compiled information and hand it over to FinCEN through their reporting portal. That's been open now for a few days as I record this. So what you're going to look at is, well, what's next? How do we get there? How do we do that? Well, what's going to happen is everybody's going to have their own obligations. We're going to be making sure that this gets done. You want to make sure that as you get this done for your entities, you're getting everything pulled together so that you get it done correctly the first time. And so let's take a look at this. How do we make sure that we've got everything done? Let's take a look at those tasks in a little bit more detail. So task one, is this entity a reporting company? You're going to want to look for that. Uh, again, it's something you can do yourself. Your CPA or enrolled agent may be able to help you with this task. As you think about it, well, what even, if, you know, I've talked to a number of CPAs, uh, CPA groups over the last year. And what I've heard is there are some of them that are being told we're you know, by their malpractice carriers, please don't do this work. We're not going to cover you if you do this work. They're being told by their bosses, no, don't do this work. We're going to farm this out to another uh, source so that it gets done by somebody other than us. So your CPA or your EA may not be able to do it. But what can they do, even if they say, no, we can't help? One of the things that they can probably do is help you triage for at least some of the reporting exemptions. Specifically, I'm thinking about the large operating company exemption. What they're going to be able to do is take a look at the prior year tax returns and see, well, did you meet that minimum revenue threshold? Remember, they're looking for $5 million of revenue outside of a few exemptions, and making sure it's all sourced here in the U.S., as U.S. source revenue. The good news is this is basically the same starting point on the three tax returns we're going to think about. Form 1120, Form 1120S for S corporations, finally Form 1065 for partnership entities. You're going to be looking at line 1C because this has the language that FinCEN is looking for where it's gross revenue after backing out returns and exemptions. But remember, the only revenue that you count is going to be U.S. source revenue. So line 1C for the prior year isn't always going to be your correct answer. It's just your starting point. Your CPA can help you determine you know, if that line 1C is the right answer. Beyond that, CPA should have a good idea on your payroll obligations. So either check with your CPA, maybe with your payroll processor. I haven't seen that any of them are doing a count of here, you know, you're, you have this many full-time employees, as far as we know, for Corporate Transparency Act uh, reasons. But remember, they're looking for, do you have more than 20 employees, meaning 21 or more full-time employees? We're not going to go through that full definition, but that's really the thing to look about. Finally, making sure for that, you know, can, somebody can take a look and say, is this a separate location? Again, the point is not to have your CPA, enrolled agent, whoever that other advisor is, make the determination for you, but help you figure out, are you at least close? Do we need to get a closer read on this? Beyond that, you're going to want to figure out at this point, what sort of reporting are you doing? Are you an existing reporting company, meaning that you were in existence before January 1, 2024, in which case you're not going to be reporting company applicants, but you built you will be reporting your beneficial owners. If you're an existing exempt entity, meaning you came into January 1, 2024 as an exempt entity, from the guidance we've gotten from
from FinCEN on this. If you have always been exempt, then you should be, uh, you should not even be reporting. You don't even need to file to claim the exemption if you've always been exempt. Now, it's fun for me as a lawyer to say, well, does always mean always? I think the reasonable way to look at this is if you have been exempt starting on January 1, 2024 as an entity, even if you were previously not exempt, that should uh, qualify you to not have to do any reporting. If you're nervous about this, it's easy enough to go in and do the reporting to just claim the exemption as a newly exempt entity. If you're a new reporting company, meaning formed on or after or registered to do business on or after January 1, 2024, then you're going to be reporting not only your beneficial owners, but your company applicants as well. When you think about that, what that means is you're going to want to have all those people lined up before you hit file or register with the appropriate Secretary of State. Now, there's a little bit of a difference. Here in 2024, entities in 2024 have 90 days to get that initial report in. The existing reporting companies have to have everything in by January 1, 2025. Reporting companies formed on or after January 1, 2025 will only have 30 days to get that initial reporting in. So, taking care of that, we know, is this entity in or out as a reporting company? We're going to want to then look at our next task. And it's really three tasks. Task one, you're going to collect information about the reporting company. So this is going to be straightforward stuff that should be sitting around for just about any entity. What's its legal name? And does it have any doing business as or any trade names? You're going to want to get those together because those will be reported. Next, what's the business street address? Again, you've probably already looked at the tax return, but you should know what that is. Then, jurisdiction of formation, and finally, the taxpayer identification number. Having done so, some of the reporting, they are looking for either the tax the EIN or an ITIN number, possibly a social security number. If it's a foreign entity, you may have a foreign tax ID number. Again, fairly straightforward stuff that you should have or the corporate records should have sitting around. Task two, part two, collecting the beneficial ownership information about your beneficial owners. Now, this is where you're going to want to look at, you know, what do you have? What is there for people? It's going to be fairly straightforward. What you're looking at is their full legal name, their date of birth, their current residential address, a unique identifying number, such as a driver's license or a passport number. Having done some of this reporting, they are looking for Again, driver's license, passport, whether it's U.S. or a foreign one, if you've got that, probably going to want to look first at your U.S. documents. And then finally, you're going to have to be submitting a digital copy of that identifying document. And again, coming back to, I've done some of this reporting already, and I'm thinking about, well, what am I actually going to be doing with clients? How am I going to help clients with this? What am I going to accept? I'll tell you what I'm not going to accept. I'm not going to be accepting somebody emailing me a copy of their document. Uh, think about what happens when you go into a bank. They're doing a lot of the similar reporting. Again, I've talked about Corporate Transparency Act being know your client, know your customer regulations, the any money laundering being brought to here in the entity world. If you go to a bank, they're not going to accept a document that's anything other than the physical document brought into your office. So I'm looking at this as, hey, somebody wants to come in, there's a great way to get all of the information from them. They can bring their driver's license. I mean, look at this, all the information we need is right there on the driver's license. Bring it in, we'll scan it for you, and then we will send that off to FinCEN. And that's the point. This reporting is not as invasive as some people have said, you know, sure, People don't like that they're having to report things, and the way that the laws are set up, IRS can't share that information because if they start sharing information about the tax returns, then it opens a whole new can of worms for them and the government on what can and can't be shared. But ultimately, this information is something that just about everybody's going to have because driver's license really does have all of that information. Now, once we've got that, then we're looking at part three of task two, you know, getting all this information that we have to report together. Well, if you have to report your company applicants, 
then this is the information we're going to be looking for for them. And it looks a lot like what we're reporting about our beneficial owners, except they're doing it in a business context. So it's still full legal name, date of birth, current uh, residential address, or a business address um, if you've got that. So there is the option. It should be the business address. Um, slides are going to be wrong. Then again, unique identifying number and then a digital copy, just as you'd have with everything else. Now, once that's in, then again, we're taking that information, task three, you're sh shipping it all off to FinCEN using either the p uploading the PDF form that we walked through before, using their online form, which we've also walked through. And then there's the third option where third parties are going to allow you to use their own systems to interface with FinCEN. Ultimately, I think the systems that'll get built using those APIs to interface directly with FinCEN is probably going to be the way to go because it'll allow entities, these reporting companies, to directly update things quickly without having to do a lot of fuss and muss. It'll make sure that it probably integrates with the HR record so it, somebody comes in, they can make an update, have it triggered to go immediately over to FinCEN without triggering a possible reporting violation. So here we are. Who does what? It's going to depend on who you're working with. Now, again, task one, that initial triage, you may look to your CPA or enrolled agent to help you. An attorney is probably going to be able to help you there. When you get to task two and determining who the beneficial owners are, you'll probably look to your attorney. Again, this is going to be outside the realm of what I've heard most CPAs are going to be comfortable doing. Collecting the information and then reporting that back to FinCEN, this is something that you're probably going to be able to do it yourself. Def I mean, definitely you can do it yourself. Your enrolled agent, your CPA may be willing to help you with this. I've heard of some firms that are going to be doing this. But again, your attorney may also be doing some of this work. So thanks so much for watching. We're still learning about what the Corporate Transparency Act looks like. We've got more videos coming out. If you've got questions, go ahead and drop them below. We're learning about this as we go along. Thanks so much for watching.